As I reflect on yesterday's message, particularly for this Memory Monday, the text that really kind of jumps out at me is Acts 1.8. You know, we went through this kind of holistic idea of mission. And the big idea was that missions is not something the church does. Missions is who the church is. And from the big covenants in the Old Testament, we see this perspective of a people by which the nations will be blessed. And that language flows through the story of redemption and culminates in Jesus after his crucifixion and resurrection. He tells his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. It's in Matthew 28, right at the very end. And then in sequence, he also tells his people that when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they will receive power and they will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and into the ends of the earth. And so I've been thinking over the past day or so about the way in which Jesus speaks with certainty about this, how he makes this prophecy. When the Holy Spirit indwells your life, you will be my witnesses. You know, I think that means that if we're not being Jesus' witness, then something has gone totally wrong. And that maybe we're not living up to that which Jesus has called us. And I don't think that this is a means by which we should just get mired down and feel super guilty. But, but, but it's a call to action. It's a conviction. That if we're filled with the Spirit and if we understand that Jesus is with us wherever we go. There's another in the fire. There's another in the water. There's always Jesus with us. He's present with us. He's given us his presence then that seems like it should strike out the fear. That seems like it should motivate us to be consistent witnesses wherever we are. We're reminded of the fact that there's no such thing as a missionary, according to the New Testament, because every believer is a missionary. There's no special calling to take the gospel to the nations. It's the responsibility and command to the entire group of people who claim to know Jesus personally. One of the great preachers of all time, his name is Charles Spurgeon. He's quoted to have said, there are missionaries or there are imposters. And maybe more close to what he said, either a Christian is a missionary or they are an imposter. And so I want to get kind of applicable here. Because it's not always easy. Sometimes I feel like it's a little nerve-wracking and anxiety-laden to think about steering a conversation to tell people about the words of life, the gospel. And yet I think back to my story about how a young man went out on a limb and did that for me. And I know that I can't argue somebody into the kingdom of God. And I know that I can't on my own persuade them to follow Jesus. But God has entrusted to us the message. And we need to understand that this idea of being a witness is predicated on the work of God when you receive the Holy Spirit. So really, we don't have a whole lot to worry about because it's not up to us. We're not the ones who change hearts. We're not the ones who transform lives. It's God. And he uses us in that process. So if I don't think that I've got the vocabulary to fully articulate the gospel, I don't have to worry about it because God's got this. And when I don't think that I've got the strength and the courage to go out on that limb and share that message, I need to remember that Jesus is with me always even into the end of the age. And whenever I have any other kind of fear, I need to remember that the promise Jesus makes is that he will be with us and he will be active. 
the last thing we looked at in Sunday's message was how in Romans 10, 14 through 17, Paul describes the way in which people are saved. A believer is sent. And that just means that they go. They, they, they go with urgency. They just they start the process. They get up and they go with agency. And then they preach. In that case, we're just talking about communi- communication, speaking the gospel. When they speak, somebody hears. And when somebody hears, that opens up a new door for them because it gives them the opportunity to believe and the call on the name of the Lord to have a relationship, a saving relationship with God. But we've got to take the context seriously because Paul presents these five in these questions that descend from the last and are meant to encourage the Roman church. How will they call on the Lord if they've not believed in him? And how will they believe in whom they've never heard? And how will they hear unless somebody preaches? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Verse 17 says, For faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Folks, we've got a message of life that's not determinant on how eloquent we are, on how much we know about the Bible. The only thing that matters is that we are faithful to go do what Jesus has commanded us to do. To make disciples of all nations. To be his witnesses. Where we are, everywhere around us. And to think globally minded about how to reach the world. Why do we go? Because Jesus commanded it. And he commanded it because missions is not just one of those things that the church does. Mission is who the church is.